In this video, we're going to talk about some of the things that we've learned since the time of Gregor Mendel, who was the founder of genetics as we know it today. He was right about most things, but there were some things that we've learned since his time that are extensions of his understanding. So we're going to go over that. So we're going to talk about three main things. Complete dominance which is what Mendel described, so we'll review that. Incomplete dominance, which is something that Dr. Mendel was not fully aware of, as well as co-dominance. Once again, something that he did not appreciate at the time. So this is what Mendel knew, and this is what we learned since then. So we'll go over these three things. Complete dominance, as a reminder, is when one dominant allele is just as good as two. For example, let's say capital A is the dominant allele, and let's say it codes for brown eyes while little a codes for blue eyes. If you have an individual with two little a's, they will definitely have blue eyes. Uh, and if you have either two big a's or a big a and a little a, that will code for brown eyes. So in this case, it doesn't matter whether you have one or if you have two, you will still get brown eyes. So in this case, the parent of this individual may have had uh, blue eyes and they gave them this little a but it doesn't matter because that one big a allele was enough to be dominant over the recessive little a and therefore the big a has complete dominance over the little a in other words the big a doesn't matter if there's one of them or if there's two so it could be a heterozygote or a homozygote, you will still express the same phenotype in, because this allele is completely dominant over this one. So that is what Mendel described. We're going to go into two scenarios in which this is not exactly true, in which the big A is completely dominant over the little a. So we'll start first with the concept of incomplete dominance. This is best demonstrated by an example in nature, the snapdragon flower. This flower can be seen in three varieties. So you might see this flower in red. You might see it in white. or you might see it in pink. How does that happen? You might be wondering. How can you get a pink flower? So, this is the example of incomplete dominance in which you'll still only have two alleles. So you'll still have a big A. You'll still have little a's. And interestingly enough, this is the heterozygote, so that's kind of strange. This has one big A and one little a. Unlike our previous examples, in which the one big A was enough to make the heterozygote look like the dominant homozygote, this is a unique case because the heterozygote is showing an intermediate phenotype. It's halfway between red and white. It's pretty much a color combination of the two. So you have red plus white giving you pink. All right, so red plus white equals pink. That is our heterozygote. And that's because 
A has incomplete dominance, as we say, over little a. It's not fully dominant. And on a molecular level, this can be explained by the fact that the A allele is coding for a pigment, such that the more pigment you have, the deeper the color, right? So if you have two A's, that's going to be more than just one A. And that's different from the case of complete dominance, because in that instance, having one big A, for example, would be just as good. So on a molecular level, perhaps that's an enzyme, and that enzyme can do the job just as well whether there's one copy or two. But in this case, because it's like directly coding for the pigment, the more pigment that you have, the deeper the color. So if you have just one of the alleles for the pigment, you'll have just a little bit of color. And so on a white base, that looks pink. So this is incomplete dominance, as opposed to the first case of complete dominance. Next, we're going to talk about something called codominance. Codominance. And the best example to understand codominance is human red blood cells. This is a red blood cell. Human red blood cells have little sugars sticking off of them. And it's these sugars that determine whether you're type A, type B, type AB, or type O. In this case, type O, it's important to understand that type O actually just means that you're not coding for these sugars. So a type O, you must be kind of bald. There's no sugars. But a type A has a particular type of sugar, type B has a particular type of sugar, and type AB has both of those sugars, while type O is bald, doesn't have any. So again, how does that happen? We have two, sorry, three alleles, IA, IB, and IO, that will give us these four combinations. And in this case, IA and IB are called codominant because neither wins out over the other. However, they are both dominant to the IO. And I'll, I'll demonstrate what I mean by that. So if you have, let's say, remember you get two alleles, one from each parent. Let's say you have two A's. You're going to be type A. However, if you have one A, and one O, remember, O just means no sugar is produced. You'll still be type A, and you'll still have those A sugars on your red blood cells. Let's say your IB, IB, you're going to be type B. If your IB, IO, once again, the O doesn't code for anything, but you still have the allele coding for those B type sugars, so you'll be type B. And if you're I-O, I-O, you don't have any of those, so you'll be completely bald. Well, on your red blood cells, of course, and it's type O. But if you have both A and B, remember, these are co-dominant. In other words, neither one wins out over the other. You're type AB, meaning some of your sugars will look like A sugars, and some will look like B sugars. So this is co-dominance. And just to contrast that with what we learned about an incomplete dominance. If you saw codominance in a flower, the intermediate phenotype would actually be a flower with both red and white spots. So it wouldn't be pink, it would be red and white spots. Okay? So, in conclusion, we learned that the standard that standard form of inheritance that Mendel showed us was complete dominance. But now we also know that you can have incomplete dominance. Those pink flowers, it's an incomplete dominance. It's somewhere between red and white. And you can also have co-dominance, in which case you would show both alleles. You would demonstrate characteristics of both alleles. So AB blood types, or red and white speckled flowers. And that concludes our video on some extensions or exceptions to Mendel's rules about complete dominance.